Hi everybody and welcome to another piano review. Today we are reviewing two of the titans of the entry level market for 88 weighted note digital pianos. We're gonna be comparing Yamaha's P45 against the venerable Casio PX160. 160 has been out on the market for a little while, but both, but still very much holding its own against instruments like the P45 and the Roland FP10. So we're gonna be comparing action, we're gonna be talking about the sound, speakers, peripherals, everything you'd really want to know about these instruments before making a decision. So thanks so much for joining us. If it's the first time to the channel, please do subscribe. We really appreciate the support. Helps you stay up to date with all things piano. So let's get started on these right away. So we're gonna start with these two instruments talking about their sound. Uh, that means their tone generator, you know, the exact gear that they're using to to create all of that piano tone as well as some of the other e-pianos and the uh, accessory sounds that it has. But we're also gonna be talking about speakers uh, and really just the overall acoustic sense of what these two instruments give you as a player. Uh, the P45 and the PX160 are really well matched when it comes to price, but when it starts to get into the specs behind the sound, uh, it's actually, it becomes quite apparent that the Casio uh, is delivering a fairly exceptional value for what the price point uh, normally affords. Um, and just walking down the specs, so polyphony, we've got 128 notes of polyphony over on the PX160, whereas we have half of that number on the P45 uh, at 64. When we're talking about the wattage in the speakers, so on the P45 we have six watts versus the Casio PX160 with the eight watts. So clearly there's a bit of a difference there. So we've got uh, less polyphony, we've got smaller amplifiers, and when you really crank the, um, I guess, crank the overall volume or crank the output on the PX160, one thing that really stands out is that these front gates or these front grills that you see on here, uh, which I believe have uh, a, f a couple of small tweeters um, behind them, is doing more uh, in line what the P125 Yamaha does, which is give that added clarity really out front so that you're hearing it, uh, just like if you were, say, on an upright piano and you had the strings and hammers in front of you and you're getting all of this front end detail. So. Uh, when it comes to the specs on the amps, when it comes to the specs uh, on the tone generator, it's really pretty remarkable what the Casio is still delivering in 2020, especially given that this product has been out on the market for several years uh, and really kind of led a whole new level of innovation in this kind of five, six hundred dollar category. Now let's actually listen to them uh, because of course outside of the specs, uh, comes the personal preferences that, that is very, very difficult to uh, define or to talk about. And then sometimes it's just best to uh, shut my mouth and let you listen to the two instruments. So we've got both pianos uh, running with their stereo line outs straight into the interface. So you're going to be hearing those uh, through the line outs, not through my lapel. Uh, and we've got them both set to their default piano uh, sounds or their, their concert piano sounds. I'm gonna start on the Casio first. We're gonna to flip to the Yamaha. And we'll see what you think of the tone at home.
So in terms of the actual piano tone, uh, that's where I think both of these instruments really do bring something that's completely satisfying uh, to the table. Uh, when you listen to this on headphones, and I do encourage you to listen to those short playing segments on headphones because that's where you really get a sense uh, of the true detail and sound, you're going to hear that there's a lot of air around the Casio sample. And I guess not uh, surprisingly, they've named their uh, piano tone engine, I think the air sampling system or the air sample synthesis. Sy Somebody can correct me in the, in the uh, comments, but I know it's, it's basically an air uh, is the trademarked name of, of their engine. Um, and it's really apt because you do get a true sense of acoustic space around that sample. Uh, and they do a really remarkable job of, of giving you uh, a sense of, of being in a larger room or being behind a real piano, especially when you're using headphones uh, on the Casio. The Yamaha, I would say, is a more uh, simple tone, but it's still a satisfying tone. Uh, I think this is built off the CFS3 uh, sample, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's not quite as complex a tone as what they load onto the P125 or certainly the P515, um, but it still does a pretty good job of giving you a reasonably uh, dynamic um, uh, piano sound. So there is a fairly good snapshot uh, or comparison of those two uh, piano tones. Now before we move on to action, some of the other elements, I am going to quickly play through some of the other comparisons so you can get a sense of what those are, uh, what those are like. So on the Yamaha, let's just go through some of the other e-piano sounds they've got. Uh, so this is e-piano 1. sounds for the Yamaha and strings a couple of harpsichord options actually I think I got a string in there Final sound they've got is vibraphone. Head back over to the Casio and we'll listen to just some of the alternate sounds that the Casio has to offer. Uh, so we've already heard the concert grand. Kind of a more mellow, a little slightly darker sound. And then we 
we've got mellow. Well, that's really mellow. Uh, and electric piano. Electric piano too. That's nice. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and FM piano. That's not bad. 60s, kind of a whirly sound. It's actually a really great selection of sounds on this PX160. I, I really have to hand it to them. The, the variety and the quality of sounds generally on this thing uh, is pretty impressive uh, for the sound. Uh, some of these are ranking right up with, with what I think uh, you know, Roland puts out on some of their lower uh, FP models. And in fact, we've got a review where we're comparing the PX160 to the FP10. So I'd suggest checking that out as well, just so you're really covering your basis with this, with this price point. But anyway, that's you know a, a pretty good roundup of the tone before we move on to action. So we've got a fairly big polyphony difference. We've got 64 versus 128. We've got a wattage difference in the speaker. Uh, we've got uh, seven per side versus eight per side. Uh, and then uh, a very different approach, or I guess a different uh, kind of acoustic sense to the samples. This is uh, a little more dry and I would say it's a slightly uh, more simple uh, wave um, uh, rendering on the Yamaha side. Uh, Kawhi, or on the Casio side, you've sort of got a more dramatic stereo field and definitely more uh, a greater sense of space around uh, the sample. So depending on which type of tone you really enjoy playing with, that might just be the decision right there. But anyway, we're gonna get those specs up on the screen and of course then move on to action. So certainly we had some differences in the sound between the P45 and the PX160, but when it comes to the action, the differences become even more obvious. Uh, the PX160 has this crazy textured key tops on it, uh, probably some of the most dramatic that you find anywhere in the digital piano universe. Uh, I mean, you can literally like scrape your, uh, you know, fingernail over the ivory faux texture there and, and it, it sort of, you can feel the bumpiness to it there. Uh, and then a very dramatic kind of exaggerated ebony uh, texture on the black keys as well. Um, I prefer having some texture on the keys. I don't think it needs to be quite this dramatic, but certainly I prefer that over the gloss, like super shiny white key and a black key where there's really not a lot of controlled slip that you have because you do need uh, the ability to sort of move your finger uh, fairly freely, uh, but with some control over, over those keys. And micro textures are what allow you to do that. You know, your finger doesn't wind up sticking and sort of jumping along a, a very, very uh, polished um, texture like that. So there is definitely a difference in the texture between the PX160 and the Yamaha, which does have one of those very, very grippy, um, highly polished white surfaces on the white key. You do have some type of a micro texture on the black key, but it's so subtle that you're, I'm not really seeing a big difference between the grippiness on the white and the grippiness on the black. It is a little bit 
jumpy, especially if there's even just a tiny little bit of moisture uh, in the air or on your finger. So that's one thing to be aware of. Neither one of these has uh, escapement on it or let off as it's sometimes known. Uh, you get that once you move up a little bit higher into uh, you know eight or nine hundred dollar price ranges, but it's generally not available here. I think the Roland FP10 is maybe the only instrument on the market at this price level that does offer escapement. So for people who are really focused on action, FP10 might be, as I mentioned earlier, might be an instrument worth checking out. Uh, the Yamaha also has double sensor, uh, the Casio has a triple sensor. In my opinion, I think the triple sensor on the Casio is, uh, it's, it's a hypothetically, it's a good feature. However, in playing the Casio action, I do uh, notice that you occasionally uh, wind up missing keys as you're playing it along because they've tried so hard to replicate the, the dynamic motion of the weight in the action uh, but the execution is that the, the action sometimes can feel just a little bit loose. Uh, now, this might, it, it may be a bit of an elitist thing to complain about, given that I know that it, up in Canada, this is selling for the low 600s, which I'm sure means in the States we're at, what, 499 or 500 bucks? So you're getting a tremendous value for that price point. And overall, I do like the weighting of the Casio a little bit better than what I get on the Yamaha. I find the Yamaha is feeling a little bit, uh, it's, it's somewhat of a dichotomy. It feels somewhat light, but at the same time, uh, there's moments where it also feels a bit spongy. But I mean, generally speaking, it's a little on the lighter side. Certainly the response is there, um, uh, but I would find it difficult to really get particularly expressive of playing classical music or anything. There's not a whole lot of layers of dynamics that you're, you're gonna find uh, on that action. And on this action, I think it's marginally better. And I do think that the texture uh, has is a, is a nice touch uh, that they've they've added to this, and the sense of weight and the sense of motion with the key on here, I think, is more accurately done. So anyway, that's my bit on the actions. We're going to put those specs up on the screen, and then we're going to move right on to talking about ports, connectivity, and a few of the accessories that you get with these machines. So both the PX160 and the P45 have all of your basics covered when it comes to your normal digital piano features. We've got metronome, we've got transpose, uh, we've got layers, uh, meaning you can play two sounds you know, over uh, at the same time. And uh, you've got uh, the, you know, a basic, uh, do you have a basic recorder? No, no basic recorder on the Yamaha. You do have a basic recorder uh, on the Privia. However, uh, with the USB uh, MIDI connections that both of these instruments have, you can of course easily hook this up to a desktop, laptop, whatever, uh, and do some recording on a peripheral device. So not a huge drawback if one or the other has onboard recording or not, uh, but I do know that some people and some teachers use the onboard recording as a nice practice tool, practice aid, so something to be aware of. Uh, the audio jacks that we already talked about, the Casio has discrete quarter inch audio jacks. It's a really nice feature. It's actually very unusual to get that at the price point. So that's a nice bonus. The Yamaha, we're taking this out of the headphone jack and there really is, that's the only option on how to get this out of the instrument. So we've actually got the line running out of the Yamaha into the audio interface and then we're taking uh, an out from the audio interface and just putting it into an amp kind of just over in the corner of the room there so I can hear what I'm doing. Otherwise, it would just be a jumbled mess. 
Uh, so we're not getting any local sound out of the Yamaha. We're getting a very small amount of local sound out of the Casio uh, because we can't shut the speakers off uh, without plugging in some phones, which we didn't want to do. So anyway, that's, th that's what's going on with the audio jacks. Already mentioned that they both have the USB connections to computer, which is a handy thing. And they are also both available with matching stands, or you can get them set up uh, with this X stand. However, the PX160 for a long time has been shipping with a bundle, uh, which uh, gives you the matching stand as well as a triple pedal with half pedaling functionality. That's just crazy for the price. Uh, so for the whole package uh, with the Casio, it's really a very difficult machine uh, to beat when you just tally up all of those specs uh, for what you're getting, including the cabinetry, the pedal, uh, quality of the sound, quality of the action. As I said, uh, the only one uh, in my opinion that it really uh, is, sort of comes close to comparing to that would be that Roland FP10 that I mentioned earlier where uh, it really does legitimately outdo the action on the Casio and probably the quality of the wave sample, um, but no triple pedal available. So lots to consider. Uh, they both come in black, as you can see, and they both come uh, with an available uh, it's not available, it actually comes in the box. There's a music stand uh, that comes there. Uh, it's plastic and you know handy, easy, very light to carry around with you. And uh, then some basic reverb and chorus options as well for, for just slight manipulation of the tone. And so that basically wraps up the, the review of the instrument. So who are these pianos for? You know, you know what do I think of it as just kind of a final thought? Well, um, there are things to like about both of them. I actually uh, appreciate the feel of the Yamaha in some playing instances. I find that the action feels a little bit tighter than the Casio, even though I like the weight of the Casio and I like the texture of the key of the Casio better than what I'm getting on the Yamaha. I'm generally very impressed with the quality of the tone engine that the Casio comes equipped with. Uh, it doesn't sound quite as tight and as well defined as some of the tone engines you get from say Roland or Kawhi once you get up into the seven, eight, nine, a hundred or thousand dollar range. But when you're comparing uh, apples to apples, like, you know, $500 keyboard, $600 keyboards, uh, it really does a, a quite a, a spectacular job of creating a sense of space around, around the note. So that I, I definitely really like. Uh, when it gets into the peripherals, the fact that you are getting the triple pedal is, is a really nice thing. The P45, unfortunately, and it's not the only one in this category that ships like that, uh, that the Roland FP10 falls into this category as well. It ships with that little plastic pedal that kind of skates all over the floor and it's really, really difficult. So one of the things I would definitely recommend if you are leaning towards the Yamaha is spend the money to upgrade the damper pedal. You will not be sorry. This is some of the best bucks that you could spend on an accessory when it comes to a digital piano. So I hope you've enjoyed the review. I hope that comparison has been helpful. I know sometimes just reading through a spec sheet and trying to decode what those really important differences are can be a little bit overwhelming if you haven't lived in piano land your whole life. Uh, so I appreciate you stopping by uh, to watch the video and give us a comment. Let us know what you thought of the video. Uh, ask more questions and we'll do our best to get those answers to you. And hopefully you've already subscribed. If not, please hit the button uh, because we'd love to see you back for more videos in the future. So once again, my name is Stu Harrison. We've been here at the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel and happy shopping. We'll see you later.